We're going to talk Pac-12 rumors. We are going to talk uh, Big 12 as well. And all of this ties in together, and I'll do it right in the middle of the segment. But Jason Shear, who writes for um, Wildcat Authority, I believe it is, uh, he, he's an Arizona beat writer. He reported just the other day, or I guess it was yesterday, uh, July 25th, he told 365 Radio that ESPN's offer to the Pac-12 schools, the initial offer, was brutal, he said. Uh, he, apparently, he says $24.5 million per school per year is the reported offer for the Pac-12. And yeah, that's pretty brutal. Uh, fiscal year 2020, it was $33.6 million. Now, last year, it was about $20 million per school, and that includes USC and UCLA. So if they were not to add any additional schools and just stick with the 10 that they've got, ESPN was willing to pay $245 million per year for those 10 schools' media rights. Is that right? I don't necessarily know that. Rob Bowen uh, jumped on and, and commented on me sharing this out on Twitter earlier, and he said basically, uh, that's wrong. Like this fiscal year 2020, the 33.6 million was based on a really old 10 year contract with Larry Scott, et cetera, that it wasn't a good deal, which it was a good deal initially, just not for the long term effects of the contract. But you look at this and you have to wonder what are they actually going to be worth without that LA market, without two of the biggest brands that the, the conference had to offer, right? Obviously, Washington, Oregon, et cetera, still offer a lot. But it, when you get down to it, you know, what, what else is there? What else do they bring, right? And if you look, I mean, John Canzano jumped in on this. He said, uh, he, he wrote an article called Delusion Aside, the Big 12 has nothing on the Pac-12. The numbers and the brands don't lie. And it goes through here. And he talks about the uh, Stuart Mandel article over at The Athletic, and it was a study that compared the television impact, uh, impact of the Big 12 versus the Pac-12, and the Pac-12 won by a knockout as far as TV ratings from 2015 through 2019, uh, and including 2021. It says the top six remaining Pac-12 universities outranked all the remaining Big 12 universities by average rating. Uh, let's see, our Oregon, Stanford, Washington, Washington State, Colorado, and Utah all averaged more than 1.44 million viewers per game, Oklahoma State was the Big 12's top-rated product, weighing in at 1.28 million viewers. Uh, the ability to kick off games at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Pac-12 after dark, if you will, creates a distinct ratings advantage for the conference. Uh, as much as Pac-12 coaches and fans loathe those late games, they may be the league's saving grace in its next deal. He said, I've looked hard at the Big 12 in recent weeks, trying to figure out whether a merger with the Pac-12 made sense. Answer, nope. I also ex uh, examined the Big 12's TV markets and wondered if there was a no-brainer target for the Pac-12 to poach. Answer, nope. I also don't think the Big 12 is a strong candidate to lure away any of the remaining Pac-12 universities. Now, this is different from Jason Shear, who obviously does not have the clout that Canzano has, but Shear remains adamant. He is confident that Arizona would rather be in the Big 12. And I'll explain in a minute why that may be. Uh, he said, when I asked the Pac-12 athletic directors about the possibility of Utah, Colorado, Arizona, or Arizona State leaving, I was told another round of defections was unlikely as long as Oregon and Washington remained in the Pac-12. There's your caveat, right? There's what you're looking for. As long as Oregon and Washington remain in the Pac-12. One current AD said, I don't know where all this, quote, the Big 12 is better, unquote, stuff is coming from. You wouldn't trade our troubles for theirs. Now, Another interesting part of this, right? Would you trade the Big 12 issues for the Pac-12 issues if you know that at least with the Big 12, there is stability? The Pac-12 is talking about the fact that, well, none of those schools really bring any value, right? It, you don't bring any value to the Pac-12 with the schools that are remaining in the Big 12. Well, interesting little tidbit on 365 sports as well. Baylor AD Mac Rhodes on the upcoming Big 12 Conference TV deal. I am really optimistic we will be at the same level in terms of last season of the Big 12 contract, which is $42.6 million, or better. That's including the four future members, 
BYU, Cincinnati, UCF, and Houston, and not including Texas or Oklahoma. So the Big 12 seems to believe that their schools will be pulling in over $40 million per year from whoever their next TV partner will be. And that may be, and that's, I was way off just the other day when I was talking about the Notre Dame and Big 12 deal with, in, in, excuse me, with NBC. Apparently I was way off because I expected them to get about $20 million per year. Yes, things may have changed a little bit as far as TV rights negotiations. But if the Big 12 is worth that much money per school, how much would the Pac-12 be worth, right? The Big 12 getting $42.6 million or better. Let's just do some quick math on, on the show. We'll just do it live as we're talking, right? $42.6 million times 12 teams. That means that ESPN or NBC or whoever would have to pay over half a billion dollars per year to the Big 12 for their television rights. Do we think that they are worth it at the current price? Maybe. But it also makes you question whether or not the Jason Shear report is actually correct. Do we think that those schools in the Big 12 could be worth $18 million more per year than the Big or than the Pac-12 schools? Yeah, I mean, I guess it all depends. But again, this goes back to stability. Would you join another conference for stability? If you're Arizona and you don't want to be waiting around to see whether or not Oregon or Washington, who have probably let it be known that if the Big Ten comes calling that they are going to leave the conference, therefore leaving that entire television contract up in the air, leaving everything up in the air. So if you want to go to a home where you know that there is stability where there's not schools that are bigger than everybody else, or don't forget the unequal revenue sharing aspect of this. There's a lot to dive into with it. There's a lot that could end up happening with this. So while you are getting different reports, varying reports from Pac-12 media, from Big 12 media, et cetera, it's almost impossible to sort through all of it and get any kind of a real conclusion. How much is stability worth? How much is Maintaining your alliance in the Pac-10 worth. How much is your uh, political and academic similarities? How much is that worth? Right? At the end of the day, all anybody really wants is to be stable. You want to know what the next 10 years is going to look like. And nobody in this entire sport really knows what that's going to look like. But you want to at least have a home. If Oregon and Washington or Stanford and Cal or whoever ends up leaving the Pac-12, what happens? That's what I'm curious about. What is what is the Pac-10 worth, or Pac-12, whatever they end up calling it, what is that conference worth without Oregon and Washington? And, of course, we, we obviously want to know what it's worth without USC and UCLA, but say you take out those top four schools, then what have you got? Because the Big 12 just took... Uh, all of the biggest G5 schools that are left out there with Cincinnati, uh, Houston, BYU, and I'm missing somebody, uh, UCF. They just took all those. I, I don't know the answer to that. I do not know the answer to that. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.